The Phlebotomy Textbook, Chapter 2, The Clinical Laboratory. Please see the PowerPoint on eLearn for learning outcomes and key terms. There are two major sections of the laboratory. The first section is the anatomical, which includes cytologists who perform pap smears and histotechnicians, which, who are people that prepare specimens for pathology review by placing thin slices of uh, tissue removed from people's bodies onto a slide and staining them. Cytogenetics may include genetic testing and flow cytometry. The second section of the laboratory is the clinical laboratory. This is the section that you will be collecting most of your samples for. The different areas of the laboratory include hematology, coagulation, chemistry, blood bank, serology, microbiology, urinalysis, phlebotomy or specimen collection, specimen processing, and laboratory information systems. The laboratory, again, is divided into two main sections, anatomic pathology and clinical laboratory. This is an example of an organizational chart. You can see the laboratory director and the laboratory administrator um, at the top of the laboratory uh, with the laboratory director being the person that is normally in charge of all of this. All the different areas of the laboratory is in charge of making sure that all the testing is done properly, but the laboratory administrator is in charge of things like quality, um, coordinating with uh, point of care outside the lab, um, education coordinator, like hiring, firing, that sort of thing. Um, whereas the lab director, who is a, a pathologist, is in charge of making sure that the science is done correctly. Clinical laboratory personnel. The laboratory director is usually an MD who has had a residency in pathology. Someone with a PhD can be a laboratory director, but this is not as common. This person performs this function for the anatomic and clinical departments. So he's the in charge of making sure the medical um, side of the laboratory is done correctly. The laboratory manager is usually an administrator who has an MLS certification from the ASCP. Um, MLS is medical laboratory scientist, um, a medical uh, master's degree and five or more years uh, of laboratory experience. So the, the doctor is in charge of the medical stuff and the administrator is in charge of um, administrative things like hiring and um, coordinating with areas outside the lab. The laboratory administration has technical and administrative management of the clinical laboratory. A section supervisor will have an MLS, possibly a specialty certification for that department or many years of experience in the department. For example, I'm a specialist in blood banking, so uh, in many cases I was in charge of the transfusion medicine section or the uh, blood donor center. Um, the supervisors are accountable to the laboratory manager and are responsible for operational functions in their departments. Someone who is a medical laboratory scientist or MLS will have a Bachelor of Science degree and can perform laboratory testing requiring independent judgment with minimal supervision. A medical laboratory technician or MLT will have an associate degree and perform laboratory testing by protocols under the supervision of an MLS. You can get an associate degree at Sinclair that qualifies you to take the MLT exam. Many MLTs <coughs> excuse me, will take an online MLS program paid for by their employers to get their bachelor's degree. A medical laboratory assistant may have phlebotomy training or basic laboratory testing, such as someone who took the um, CLT program uh, but did not take the MLT exam and pass it. A phlebotomist must have a high school diploma, phlebotomy training, and sample collection and processing training. Some laboratories will have education coordinators for staff and students 
the rotate there, a point of care testing coordinator will monitor the testing that is done by nursing staff to ensure that the laboratory standards are met. The laboratory information system manager is very important to the operation of the computer systems that report test results. The quality management coordinator makes sure that the laboratory is in compliance with following regulations and standards that provide quality results for the patients. Hematology is a department that does testing that can detect conditions such as anemia and leukemia. Please see the study mate definitions to learn more about these terms. Hematology is the study of the formed elements of the blood for the purpose of making a diagnosis. The formed elements are red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. The most common test performed in hematology is the complete blood count, which um, contains many um, different tests and indices for different things. The specimen required in hematology is whole blood anticoagulated with EDTA. The tube is the purple or lavender stopper tube. It must be inverted eight times to prevent clotting. Even microclots in the tube will invalidate the results and can clog up the instrument causing downtime. Plasma is the liquid portion of an anticoagulated tube. There's no clot as shown in the EDTA tube, uh, the purple top one. Serum is a liquid portion of the clotted sample as shown in the red top tube. The difference in the serum is that serum lacks fibrinogen, which has been used to form the clot. For a list of tests performed in hematology department, please see the PowerPoint in eLearn. The next department is coagulation, which may be its own department or it might be found in the same department as hematology. Coagulation evaluates the processes of hemostasis. The light blue sodium citrate is the anticoagulated tube that is used in this department. The tube must be full and inverted three to five times to prevent the sample from clotting. The main test performed in the coagulation department is the prothrombin time, which is used in a calculation to produce the INR, which allows patients to have the test done at different labs and to be normalized so that they can be compared. So if you had it done at a Kettering lab, and then you did, did it at a um, Premier Health lab, you could still compare the INR. Um, the, active, the other test uh, is the activated partial thromboplastin time, or the APTT. Um, those are the two common tests done in the coagulation department. Both of these tests um, are done to determine the ability of a patient to clot property. For a list of tests performed in the coagulation section, please see the PowerPoint in eLearn. The clinical chemistry is a high-tech department with automated instruments and computers that are designed to work with small volumes. To review these terms, go to eLearn and review the study mate definitions. For a table listing the chemistry department tests, please see the PowerPoint in eLearn. The blood bank section or immunohematology department is the section where blood is received from the donor center stored and processed for transfusion. They perform blood types, cross mashes, and release blood for transfusion after compatibility is completed. Special requirements for labeling are usually required for these samples and EDTA pink top tube is the tube commonly used in this department. Please see the study mate definitions in eLearn or in the glossary of your book to learn these terms. The most important thing for a blood bank sample is that the patient's identification is correct. There is a requirement that every blood type be compared to a patient's previous record or that two samples are collected at different times be compared to each other to ensure that the patient's type is correct. The lavender tube may be used, but usually the pink top tube is used. With some testing, a red top with no gel could be used, but a serum separator can never be used. For a list of tests performed in the blood bank, review the PowerPoint in eLearn. The serology or immunology department performs testing to evaluate the body's immune responses. 
It looks for the presence of antibodies produced against foreign antigens and antibodies produced against oneself called autoantibodies. Serum separator tubes can interfere with engine antibody reactions. Please see StudyMate and eLearn or your glossary to learn these terms. Please review the PowerPoint and eLearn to review the tests done in the serology department. The microbiology department involves culture and testing for microorganisms. Please review the glossary or study mate definitions in eLearn. Microbiology can test for bacteria, fungi, parasites, and viruses. The procedures can include cultures, stains, microscopic examination, and biochemical reactions. Phlebotomists do collect blood samples for blood cultures. Other samples may be received by the phlebotomist and taken to the laboratory, but these are not collected by the phlebotomist. You can review the PowerPoint for a list of tests performed in microbiology. Review these terms in study mate and the glossary of the book to learn the meaning of these terms. Your analysis section performs screening of metabolic disorders and kidney infection. Uh, this may be part of the chemistry or hematology departments. Your analysis looks at the physical characteristics, chemical composition, and microscopic examination for abnormal sediment. It may be the phlebotomist's uh, job to give instructions for patients to collect a urine sample. Specimens can be first morning, which is the best sample, due to the concentration of the, the constituents in the urine, a random sample, which can be collected any time during the day, or a 24-hour collection, which must be, um, this is where a patient takes a big jug home and collects all the urine for 24 hours. These samples will be brought to the lab or collected in the lab by the patient. The tests performed in the urinalysis department are listed in the PowerPoint and eLearn. Thank you for listening. This concludes my presentation.